In this section, we'll discuss energy, head, and grade lines in an open channel flow. There are three energy terms in an open channel flow. First is kinetic energy, that is our velocity of the fluid. Second is potential energy, the energy associated with the fluid's elevation above a baseline. The pressure energy is that associated with the depth of the fluid. We traditionally represent these as head, that is the energy per unit weight. When you divide the kinetic energy, one half mv squared, by the weight, you end up with v squared over 2g. This has units of length. Now this is actually a hydrostatic approximation of energy. That is, we're neglecting energy that's associated with pressure forces that are caused by the fluid motion. The energy in these non-hydrostatic forces that we're missing is almost always lost to friction in a steady open channel flow. So the neglect is reasonable for large scale analyses. The three pieces of energy can be graphed together. We start with the bottom elevation, measured from some baseline z equals zero. We add to that the depth, and then the v squared over 2g, our velocity head. So the blue line represents the actual water surface elevation, and the dashed red line represents the velocity head added onto the depth, so the total black arrow, the blue arrow, and the red arrow is all the energy in the fluid. Now you may remember from your fluid mechanics class Pascal's law which was derived for a static fluid and here we can use it as a hydrostatic fluid for one that's moving. Our pressure in the fluid is rho gh where h is the distance below the free surface. The potential energy per unit volume is given by rho gz, where z is the elevation. So if we think about a particle at the mid-depth, let's call this h, which is y. Remember, y is our depth, so y divided by 2, and z0 is the channel at bottom elevation. We can say that potential energy per unit volume is rho g z0 plus y over 2. And that same particle has the pressure energy associated with it of rho g y over 2. If we sum those together, we have rho g z0 plus y. That is the elevation of the bottom plus the depth of the fluid. You can use this to show that anywhere in the water, water that the pressure plus the potential energy for unit volume is equal to rho g z0 plus y. That is the elevation of the bottom of the channel plus the depth of the water. So the contributions of these parts of the energy to our head are simply given by z0 plus y. In hydraulics we will always talk about head when we are discussing energy. So our head is our energy per unit weight. The head has units of length, usually meters or feet, and the total head is the sum of the velocity head, depth, and bottom elevation. A key point is that the total head always decreases going down the open channel in the flow direction. For the head to go up would require an energy source, and we simply don't have those in an open channel flow. Let's go back to our picture of a uniform flow in an open channel. The dashed red line is the total head of the system, and we'll call this the energy grade line. The water surface, our blue line, is sometimes called the hydraulic grade line. This term is more important when we're dealing with piping, but, to be, but is used off at sometimes in open channel flow. Now, in a uniform flow, the total head decreases going downstream at exactly the same rate as the bottom elevation decreases. That is that the energy grade line is going to be parallel to the bottom slope. Remember, in a uniform flow, the gravitational acceleration balances frictional loss. This is why the water level, y, doesn't change as you go downstream. That is, the water level is parallel to the bottom slope. Since we're talking about steady flows, Q doesn't change going downstream, 
and y does it change, and the cross-sectional shape does it change, then it follows that the velocity doesn't change either. Therefore, the EGL must also be a constant and parallel to the bottom slope and the water surface in a uniform flow. This is only true in a uniform flow. Our key point here is that the slope of the EGL represents the loss of energy due to friction moving down the channel, and that is going to be parallel to the bottom slope in a uniform flow by definition. Now, in a non-uniform flow, let's imagine flow in a channel that has a constant cross-section, but the water is getting deeper as you go downstream. Since Q is fixed, the velocity must also be decreasing going downstream. The water gets deeper, the velocity must be decreasing. As the velocity decreases, you expect the rate of energy loss to decrease. That is, slower velocities will lose energy at a slower rate than do higher velocities. This means that the EGL must actually get closer to the water surface, but have a reduced gradient compared to the slope of the bottom. So the dashed red line here shows a possible EGL consistent with the water getting deeper going downstream. Here the EGL has the same directional curve as the water surface elevation, but not quite as much curvature because the velocity is decreasing. Note that the rate of energy loss is decreasing as compared to the energy loss that would be implied by a uniform flow where the energy grade line is parallel to the bottom slope. So when you're interpreting or drawing water surface elevation, keep some of these ideas in mind. If the depth increases, the velocity must be getting smaller. If the velocity gets smaller, the energy grade line must get closer to the water surface. But if the velocity gets smaller, the rate of energy loss must also be smaller, so the EGL slope must be decreased. It can be difficult to correctly draw the subtle differences, so be very careful. That's the end of energy, head, and grade lines.